Hey everyone, today I want to show you the coolest feature in Stellarium that I've found yet and help you plan your targets and get the best results possible in your particular area. Today I want to show you the coolest feature here in Stellarium Plus. Now the Plus version is a one-time fee. I can't remember what I paid. I think it was about $15. But the number of features you get for this price is really, really impressive. And so let me show you what this is. A couple of weeks ago, I did a video on how you can find the brightest targets and start planning your sessions. And so I found that to be very useful. I used a combination of Polar Scope Align Pro and Stellarium. But recently I found something even more useful and that's right here in Stellarium Plus. So let's take a look at the like this elephant trunk nebula right here. There's a button right here called visibility and when we press this this shows you not only the path that it's going to take but when it is going to take it. And so you can see here at about six o'clock in the morning it will be just over Polaris and it shows you a graph down at the bottom. And so at first glance, when I saw this, I thought, oh, okay, all right, that's, that's that. Now, how is that really going to be that useful? But what I've been doing recently is I've been trying to plan my sessions to meet a couple of criteria. And one of those is to have something that rises straight up in the sky and goes over as many of the obstacles that I have in my backyard as possible. So if we go over here and look at some of these recent searches, Another one that I did here was uh, C27. Uh, this is uh, the Crescent Nebula. And then you can see that, look at this, it just goes straight up. And it's, it's really very, very close to the other one. It goes straight up and a little bit over here and it's always high in the sky. So at about 9.30 or something like that, I can start imaging it because my obstructions are way higher than are in the default landscape here and then you can see what it's going to do. Now you can compare this to uh, something else, like if we just grab the moon, or let me see, where's the moon? Oh, I'll just look it up again. Okay, and then we look at the visibility here. Now you can see that it has a, a lot different results. It comes up in the east, it stays over the south, and it's fairly low in the sky, and so, if, you know, if you're trying to photograph the moon, that's fine. But you see it has a completely different characteristic than some of these other things that I'm looking at. So if we look at nebula, which is what I'm trying to do, it's not really nebula season, but I'm trying to find any nebula that I can. So like the North American nebula, and we take a look at that, that actually works out really well and that meets that criteria. But some of the others don't. Let's see if we can find one. You see, this doesn't. This is the Trifed Nebula, and that does two things. For one thing, it's almost exactly the same path as the moon. It's also quite low in the sky, and it's south, which is where the moon is. And so everything about that is wrong as far as trying to image it right now. And that's the whole trick, is trying to find the best target that you can image now, uh, given the current situation that you're in, whether it be the moon, whether you're in a light polluted sky like I am, whether you have a lot of obstructions, or whatever the case may be. So armed with this knowledge, I went out and I photographed the Crescent Nebula in narrowband right under some very bright moon conditions. So here's the hydrogen alpha channel and I combined this with sulfur 2 and oxygen 3 and then I had this resulting color image of the Crescent Nebula. And I'm happy with the results given the circumstances that I had and also the equipment that I'm using. Head on over to the uh, the iOS App Store or the Google Play Store and here's the Play Store and it's listed for $20. I, I don't make anything at all off this. I'm just recommending this because I think it's a really good bargain 
and it's incredibly useful. We're spending so much money for all of our astrophotography equipment anyway. An investment of $20 or $15 or whatever it is is really small compared to what you can get out of it. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so if you would like to see the updates. Have a good day.